welcome one and all to my lecture on the sociological approach five approaches of literary criticism by wilbur scott is a text that is prescribed for the fifth semester students of the ba english program of manon maniam sundarnar university my talk will focus only on the first part of the introduction to the sociological approach that is i will be speaking only about the history of sociological criticism as mentioned by wilbur scott in his introduction to the sociological approach in his book five approaches of literary criticism there are different ways of approaching any literary text be it a poem a novel or a drama or a piece of prose fiction different people look at text from different perspectives some people look at it from a social perspective some people look at the political elements that have been described in the text some people look at it from a historical perspective some look at it from a uh, feminist point of view so these are basically the different ways in which we approach literary texts under consideration and this can apply to any form of literature it can be uh, the way we look at a poem the way we look at a novel uh, an essay or uh, a drama or a one act play now sociological criticism what exactly is sociological criticism sociological criticism places literature in its larger social context that is it looks at how society has been depicted in a particular novel it looks at the social background of the characters in that particular novel and it analyzes the methods which are used by the writer or the author to describe the social background the social setting in which he or she has placed the characters in the novel the essay begins by talking about sociological criticism's relevance to a better understanding of literary texts and when we understand the social background when we understand the social setting in which a particular character in a novel is placed it actually heightens our response to the text it helps us to understand the story better the character better and it also gives us a view of the society of that particular period of time one thing we have to understand and i'm quoting wilbur scott here he says art is not created in a vacuum which is very true when a writer writes the writer even though the writer may be writing in isolation writers write from the experiences that have shaped them the experiences that have played a seminal role in shaping their perspective in shaping their point of view and uh, these experiences come to them from the social setting in which they are placed so an author when he sets out to write a novel or um, um, uh, any piece of writing for that matter that author is not writing in vacuum the author is influenced by the social background the political background the uh, economic situation in which he or she finds himself and uh, the economic situation or the political situation or the social situation that he wants to place the characters of his novel in the sociological critic therefore takes a great deal of pain in order to understand the social background of the characters in the novel the sociological critic will study how society has been depicted how people and uh, how their manners how their behavior has been depicted uh, in a particular novel based on the social setting of that novel for example here uh, i'll be talking about jane austen's novel pride and prejudice this particular 
novel is a classic and it was uh, published in the year 1813. It is a romantic novel and it is considered to be a novel of manners. Now this particular novel, it depicts the life of men and women in England during the Regency period. The Regency period was the period when King George III was unwell and England was ruled by Prince Regent, the next king to be, that is George IV. So George III was unwell and his son, the Prince Regent was ruling over England and when George III passed away, the Prince Regent became King George IV. So the period when he was in charge of England is known as the Regency period and that is the period in which this particular novel Pride and Prejudice is set. And uh, Jane Austen gives us a very uh, realistic picture of the society of that particular time. The novel is not just about the development of the character of Elizabeth Bennet. It, it is also a study of the manners, the behavior, the social customs of that period. So a sociological critic will not be looking at other aspects described in the novel because she does talk about uh, the, uh, she does hint at the political events also which were taking place in England at that point of time. But a sociological critic would strictly focus on the social aspects which were described by Jane Austen in the novel. And the novel describes the situation of women in a society when there was no other expectation from them other than that of getting married to suitable prosperous husbands. Matchmaking was the very popular pastime and it was a period of great social formality and show. So the novel focuses on the hypocrisy and the double standards which were prevalent in the society of that time. The relationship between the central protagonist of the novel Elizabeth Bennet and Darcy is not smooth and calm. But both of them are attracted to each other. Elizabeth is a character who is very bold, confident. She is also extremely impulsive and she has certain prejudice towards Darcy. By the end of the novel, she overcomes her prejudice and Darcy overcomes his pride and they get married to each other. Now, when you read the novel and you are reading it from a sociological perspective, then you uh, will focus on how society has been, uh, how society of that particular period, the early uh, 19th century society, English society, middle class and upper middle class society has been depicted by Jane Austen in her very important and famous novel, Pride and Prejudice. In order to have a better understanding of the novel, if we uh, look at the uh, society, uh, a history of the society of England during the early 19th century and we connect it with the events and uh, the incidents in the novel, then it will definitely increase our understanding of the novel and also heighten our response to the novel. Now, the, in the next section of the um, essay on the sociological approach or the introduction to the sociological approach, Wilbur Scott points out that Edmund Wilson, Edmund Wilson, the American critic and writer, traced the origin of sociological criticism to the 18th century Italian professor, historian, rhetorician, jurist and philosopher Giambattista Vico. What Vico did was he studied Greek uh, writer Homer's epics, the Iliad and the Odyssey. And he studied these two epic poems in order to have a better understanding of Greek society of the time of the poet. That is how Greek society was, how they uh, functioned, what were the customs, the practices, 
the social manners that were followed by the people of Greece in the time of Homer as has been depicted by Homer in his two epic poems the Iliad and the Odyssey. Then in the 19th century it was Johann Gottfried von Herder the German philosopher, theologian, poet and literary critic who also was devoted to a sociological study of literature. Then Wilbur Scott points out that it was the Frenchman, the French critic and historian Hippolyte Taine who believed that literature is the consequence of the moment, the race and the milieu, milieu meaning social setting. Before the end of the 19th century, another aspect of sociological criticism came up with the arrival of Marxism. Marxism which was a study of the methods of production by Karl Marx and Engels. Now both of them what they did was they studied the various ways in which human beings work together in order to make money and use this money to survive and improve their social life. So this led to the development of Marxist criticism in the 1930s which is actually an important branch of sociological criticism. Thank you. I will be covering the remaining part of the essay in subsequent videos that will deal with the sociological approach in a page by page manner. Thank you once again.